Hello, I'm Rob from The Malt Miller, and today I'm joined by both Mark and Nick. Mark and Nick are our customer service team, but really importantly, they're also brewers. So when you have questions that you're firing into us about anything brewing related, it's actually brewers that are answering your questions. So today we're brewing a beer on the G40. Mark, can you tell us a bit about the beer that we're brewing? Yeah, it's um, it's a pale beer, really crushable. Uh, the base malt's 50-50 split between um, Heidelberg. Yeah, um, so that's the really pale malt from Best Malts. Yes, yep. and also their pale ale malt as okay, well, so 50-50 cool, yeah. base. Some Carahel, which I like for a little bit of mouthfeel and head retention, yep. and a small amount of light crystal as well. What about the hops that are involved? Hops, um, it's just going to be single hop, and it's going to be Summit. Okay, that really is quite an unusual one for, for a single hop. Beer. So why yeah, are you using that? what what drove me to that? We were repackaging some hops um, a couple of weeks ago, and the aroma um, downstairs was absolutely immense, and it drew a few people in, and it yeah. just made me think we need to brew with that hop, and if we do a single hop beer, we can really you know get to grips with it and see what it brings to the table. Funny enough, when we are packaging so many different batches of hops occasionally you get a batch that is absolutely outstanding and i think that was probably true of the summit on that on the, yeah. the particular batch that we were packaging absolutely yeah so the the premise of this video is we're doing a split batch so same same work um different yeast nick mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about the yeast that we're using well we've chosen to use two yeasts from mangrove jack we've got liberty bell which is a uh, traditional kind of english um, ale yeast which is going to uh, bring forward the malt characteristics of the brew and yeah. we're using hophead uh, hophead is a uh, is a newer yeast it's got an enzyme in there which will really bring forward the uh, the hop flavors um, yeah so it's uh, not just yeast is it there's no, a, it's, a yeast it's, and uh, enzyme yeast and enzyme now we do also sell the enzyme separately yeah we sell that aromazyme but this one's got the uh, en uh, enzyme bundled in with the yeast as it, as it were. So it's really going to be very interesting to see what that brings to the flavour of the final brew. One batch, two fermenters, two different yeasts. Let's see how we go. Okay, right, so that's brew day done. How did it, how did it go? Yeah, it went really well. Um, it, it's, a, it's a joy brewing on the G40. Uh, Normally I'll brew on the G30. It's just a, like a big brother of it, but it's nice having th not having to worry about hitting the centre pipe when you're doughing in and things like that. But yeah, yeah it's, it's a really nice machine to brew on. Nice, how'd it go, Mark? Yeah, yeah, really good, really good. Super easy with the G40. Um, the brew itself went really well. The hops. Your numbers are right. Yeah, yeah, hit all yeah. the numbers and the, the hops when we opened them and we're putting them in. That aroma came back from when we were repackaging the other day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, really looking forward to it. It's good. We're going to be back here in a couple of weeks once the beer's fermented out. Mm -hmm. We've got a dry hop to do. There is a dry hop, yeah, yeah. We'll do that at the same time in, in obviously both fermenters, same amounts, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll be back here a couple of weeks ready to yeah. do a taste test. We're loving this magic of YouTube because it's now two weeks later. Beer's fermented. How did the fermentation go? It went uh, very well. Um, we basically split the work between two fermenters, yep. put 19 litres into each. Yep. Um, we uh, dropped it down to 14 degrees to do the dry hop, we did exactly the same dry hop. Basically, uh, everything that we could do the, the same, we did do the same. Yep. The only thing that was different was the yeast. Okay, so now we're gonna do our blind taste test to see if the premise of our experiment has worked, mm -hmm. that we can see a noticeable difference between the two beers Let's see how we go. Sample A is on my right, mm -hmm. and sample A is on your my right, right as, well. as well. Okay, right, so let's look at the appearance first. And actually, there's quite a big difference in that. With the clarity of the beer, definitely sample B is cleared down better than sample A. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, at this point, we need to say it's been dry hot, so. Yeah, it's been dry hot. Not a massive dry hot, 60 grams in each, in each fermenter, yeah, but obviously the, the, the haze here is caused by dry hot, but 
You did notice a, yeah. an so, observation. So we, we, we did a few kind of like checks and samples whilst we were doing the fermentation. Yeah. And uh, the Liberty Bell, before we dry hopped, uh, was really quite clear. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's not perfectly clear, but it was a much brighter beer than the uh, than the hop head version. <laughs> interesting. Um, and that was very interesting. Um, and there was different. There was kind of different estuary smells coming off the airlocks as well, which was quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My first impression is that the that sample B is a clearer is a clearer beer. Also, um, both these the, the head retention on the sample A seems to be better as well. Let's go in and find out what the yeah. aroma is like. Yeah. Okay. So actually, the difference in aroma is pronounced. Mm -hmm. Sample A has got a stronger hop aroma, but it's also got a malt aroma to it as well. So mm -hmm. it's the, yeah. the, the aroma is stronger in both directions. So at the moment, we're picking up a difference in clarity and a difference in aroma yeah. that is pronounced. Should we go in for a taste test? Yeah, sure. I'm going for a sample A here. Yeah? You've produced a nice beer. Yeah, it's That's good, a really nice it? beer. It's a really nice beer. So we're looking at a single hop summit. Yeah. Mm. That really is quite surprising. It is absolutely pronounced. Yeah. So what we've produced here is almost two different beers. Yeah, it is. It is, it is, it is really. So sample A is a much more heavier mouthfeel. Yep. We've already said it's heavier on aroma and heavier on malt aroma as well, and that completely carries on yep. in, the, carries in, the, through in the taste. Carries through in the taste. This is a, sample B is a, it's still a very pleasant beer, but it's a thinner, yeah. a thinner mouthfeel, yeah. a sharper bitterness. Mm a sharper bitterness in sample B. Different beers, I'd say mm -hmm. I much prefer this. This is a much more my style beer that's, mm -hmm. that's got that full mouth feel and the aroma's up there. And uh, yeah, that's the yeast that I would be using for this style of beer. Yeah. It's actually Ironically, produced. I actually prefer sample B. Oh, do you really? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's just the-, the So why, do, what, I, so this is interesting. What you prefer, See, I'm, 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 because I'm, it's I'm, a I'm, cleaner. I prefer, yeah, I prefer slightly kind of, um, um, Slightly more kind of uh, older fashioned uh, kind of pale ales and so forth. Yeah. So, and I think that, that comes through on that, to be honest with you. Yeah, okay, that's really interesting. Yeah. So, we've got the two yeasts here we've yep. got the Liberty Bow and, and we've head. got the Hop Head. So, we're going to make our choice mm -hmm. based on what we know about the yeasts. Where are we going with uh, what I'm do you think? I'm going to have another taste. Okay. I reckon that's the Liberty Bow and I reckon that's the Hop Head. So you're going with A for the hop head? Yeah. So am I. Um, I what actually, not only is, are the, is the aroma more pronounced yeah. on this, but because this is actually a clearer beer, and I think that that, that would be what Liberty Bow is, a, is a, based on a traditional English yeast, actually. Mm. So I think that, that would be drop out clearer. That's what I'm thinking. So yeah. <laughs> so, we're gonna find out. so then we're going to find out. Right, here yeah, we go. Okay. So. so We are completely wrong. Completely and wrong. <laughs> Liberty <laughs> Bow is the better. So actually that is really, a really, really ex surprising yeah. um, experiment to do. And I can't believe the difference in the, in the two finished beers. Yeah, um, remarkably different beers. I suppose it goes to say quite a lot between, um, for preconceived ideas and actually the proof of the pudding is in the flavours that you yeah. that you really like. I'm really, really surprised at that experiment. Yeah. In conclusion, the premise of the experiment was to find out whether we can see a noticeable difference in the yeast. Do we think that we've achieved that goal? Yeah, amazing how much difference is uh, there is between the two beers. They're both lovely beers. They're but, both lovely beers, yeah. uh, but we have challenged preconceived ideas and yep. that's always uh, that's always a great thing great thing to do Absolutely. we've learned every day's a school day for us yep. Le and we've learned loads by doing this and we think that it's such a great thing and easy thing to do at home one batch of wort split into two fermenters yep. trying different yeast and actually these two yeasts are relatively similar yeah yet they've produced two different beers Absolutely. imagine using 
you know, like a, a Belgian strain and uh, and an American strain on yep. the same on the same batch, and then we can really delve into exactly what those yeast are showing us. So, yeah, yeah congratulations! What a great experiment to do. Yeah, yeah. So, I hope you've really enjoyed the video today. We've got plenty more content on our YouTube channel, so please subscribe and like the video and hit the bell for notifications. Have a great brew.